We're going to look today at three obstacles to achieving your goals. We need to accept, first of all, that every time you push yourself into territory you've never been in before, so you're here but you want to go there, the unknown territory is going to have obstacles. So we have to accept that this is part of the norm. The courage to set goals requires you to face obstacles that you've not had before. So with that said and done, let's look at three of the baddies that really do seem to give us trouble. The first one is procrastination. What I mean here, well, once we've set the goal, we get all excited, I want to get fit, or I want to get a new cash flow figure, or I want to be more financially secure, or whatever we're gonna put out there, the shine will soon wear off when you realize that by getting fit, you've got to wake up at 4.30 in the morning, in the rain, put on your running shoes and get out there and your body's saying, I'm not going with you. And so our emotions start disconnecting from the goal and all we're left is sort of the, the choice and the intellectual commitment that you made. And the, the brain's a clever thing. It will start saying, no, we don't want to do this. And so we procrastinate, we put things off. So let's look quickly at how we deal with that. Number one, procrastination is the thief of time. So if you want to steal your time and lose time, procrastinate. Secondly, make a decision to get rid of procrastination and do it now and don't procrastinate on this thing. In other words, get going with working on procrastination. I used to be a very good procrastinator. I nearly had my bachelor's degree in it and I decided I was going to stop procrastinating. And what I did is that when an activity came in front of me, I decided to address it. I either did it or I diarized it or I delegated or I just said I'm not going to do it at all. The four Ds we've spoken of before. But I just decided to deal with it. So when the act activity actually appears on your horizon, like get up in the morning and run, make a cognitive decision minus the emotion, I made this commitment, get in there and do it. And then you can make sure that you'll overcome it. The two ways to do that, by the way, if it's an overwhelming one, in other words, it's very big, break it up into chunks. And if it's very unpleasant, do it now. The second obstacle is the lack of courage to follow through. Or maybe this is actually worse than procrastination, in my opinion, especially when it comes to bigger goals. Once you set bigger goals, you realize that there's a cost to making that bigger goal come true. If you want to become number one in the market or you want to make sure that you've got you've saved x thousands of rands or dollars or whatever it is that you've done you're going to find that there's going to be an expense on that it's going to be a time expense it's going to be a financial expense commitment expense and often we don't have the courage of our own convictions to fulfill this and i remember i set a bhag a big hairy audacious goal in my life probably about eight or nine years ago and that was to increase my turnover by an additional 250 percent in two years that was audacious and I'll tell you what, when I made that decision, it was expensive for me to do so. And when I got to the end of two years, I did a calculation and I got to 225%. And six months later, I got to 250. So I was a bit short, but I got to my goal. But you know what? I had to have the courage of my convictions that what I said I was going to do, I did it. And boy, was it a great feeling when I achieved it. The third one is poor follow through. In other words, once you've set your goal, it can either easily gather dust. And someone comes back to you and says, remember you did? You said you were going to do that? And you go, oh, yeah, you know, I've been so busy and, you know, time, you know, just ran away and we have all these excuses. So here's a good way to, to fix up this obstacle of poor follow-through. Number one, write your goals down. I've been writing goals down now since 1986. And I found that if I write my goals down, they seem to embed in my mind a whole lot better. And you can look at our module on goal setting to get more detail on that. Secondly, I make sure that I review my goals at least every quarter. Every 90 days, I make sure that I look at my goals and I re-engage them so that I don't let them gather any dust. And then I put the actions for those goals into my diary. I remember when I set up my first website and I thought my goal was to set a website. It used to bug me because I hadn't got the website set up. But then I sat down and I put it in my diary. Go and speak to this webmaster. Go and get this help. Go and get that. And there's no greater feeling than watching that goal just get smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually it's disappeared because you've achieved it. It's gone. Well done. So someone once said, goals that are out of sight are out of mind. That which we are not reminded of, we generally do nothing about. So we need to get back to achieving those wonderful, amazing goals that we set out initially. Remember the emotions you had when you set them and go and give it 110%.